Second Life is an online virtual world with tremendous potential for work, play, and education. Hundreds of real-world colleges and universities exist in Second Life, where opportunities include distance education and simulation training in a 3D environment. But to experience any of it, every user must create an avatar. Professor Leon James teaches avatar psychology at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Traditionally, avatar is a Hindu word that means uh, incarnation. So uh, according to that, the gods incarnated as human beings. In the modern era, since computers, we use avatar to refer to our digital identity. So an email address can be considered as a simple form of an avatar. Uh, logos in chat rooms, uh, people are identified by those logos. You can call that an avatar too. And uh, now we have the most advanced form of avatars, which is in the virtual world. And that's what we're doing here in Second Life at the University of Hawaii System Island. Technology specialist and PhD student Rebecca Meter helps educators use technology in their classrooms and is studying identity in virtual educational environments. I feel that there is a big link between identity and activity. So I believe how you choose to identify yourselves is directly related to how or what type of activity you're going to participate in in these type of environments. So this is my avatar, Professor Schwartz. I made her to look a little bit like me. So notice that her hair is dark and that she's wearing glasses like I used to wear. I also dressed her conservatively because I do participate in a lot of educational events within Second Life. I want to put on a professional persona and to be taken seriously within this type of environment. People are visual creatures and a lot of times how people will react to you is how, um, how they view you and how you look. A lot of times when you go into Second Life, you are made out to be this 21-year-old model. <laughs> uh, there has been a complaint from people um, who are older that there are not a lot of um, customizable skins, hairs, uh, clothing that reflect their generation or how they look in real life, so that has been a big complaint. Minority ethnic groups are underrepresented in this um, virtual environment, so uh, a lot of times it is hard to uh, find, I guess, particular skins, clothing um, that would pertain to the group that you would like to represent within your avatar, the particular ethnicity that you would um, choose to portray. Uh, as your avatar. There is also that um, limitation who, for those who um, do not want to define themselves solely as male or female. They, you know, a lot of, there are a lot of people who are transsexual and transgendered in this uh, environment and there are limitations in regards to how they can customize themselves. I was asking this question to my students earlier today and, uh, you know, how does your avatar reveal things? and. Well, uh, it does reveal what you love, for instance. It reveals your loves. Uh, some people call the avatar an embodiment. So it's, an, it's the embodiment of people's emotions, loves, um, motivations, and so on. Uh, through the avatar, people can express things they want to do. Uh, the avatar performs interactions with others, collaborative interactions, so that people are able to achieve various projects, even though they're not physically present with each other. So it's uh, very sophisticated. Uh, people feel very uh, proprietary and protective uh, about their avatars. And um, people find all sorts of ways of expressing that in, in various ways. That's part of the richness of, of the virtual world.